On 6 December, a unit from the 1st Air Cavalry lands on swampy ground near the mouth of the Suida Valley, eight kilometers west of Hammond Airstrip. As part of Operation Thayer II, the unit's mission is to search and clear a VC village in the area. Despite caution, one man is badly injured by a booby trap. Many Viet Cong are known to use this hamlet as a base, coming down from the mountains for food and supplies. The men thoroughly search every dwelling in the village, finding both VC and captured U.S. material. Injured while trying to escape, this suspect receives medical aid. One hut is found to conceal a bunker, and a flamethrower makes short work of it. In all, 18 suspects are rounded up, and with the aid of some family photographs, a Vietnamese informer points out VC who have lived in the village. Then, looking over the blindfolded captives, he picks out those he recognizes. Most are not soldiers, but farmers, acting as couriers and tax collectors. After preliminary questioning, the prisoners are readied for return to base camp. Operation Thayer II, which has so far accounted for 600 enemy dead and 1,000 suspects captured, continues in Vindin province. In Tainin province on 28 December, members of the 196th Light Infantry Brigade get set to pave the way for an assault on Viet Cong held Black Virgin Mountain. At first, the operation takes the unit through swollen streams and tall grass. Then, deep in jungle, they encounter light contact with the VC. M79s are fired as the men push on. Then, as quickly as it has begun, the resistance dissolves. The encounter has resulted in no casualties. During the pause, a combat photographer moves among the troops, while artillery targets are being checked, and the men wait. On the 10th of December, elements of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment secure a forward base campsite in Binh Thuy province. At this remote location, 128 kilometers northeast of Saigon, the 11th will commence a month-long operation to clear the region of Viet Cong and protect the rice harvest in the area. Up until this time, the area which is composed of overgrown rubber plantations and numerous rice fields has been totally controlled by the enemy. The first job of the armored cavalry is to strengthen camp defenses. Then the men take care of themselves. Now in an organized defense posture around the campsite perimeter, self-propelled 155 howitzers fire a harassment and interdiction mission. A vehicular convoy bringing additional elements of the 11th Armored approaches the campsite along Highway 3. The convoy is out of Zwan Lock, 64 kilometers to the southwest. A security patrol moves out ahead of the convoy. Preparing for an extended operation, the Armored Regiment brings up a wide variety of their organic equipment. The first convoy was ambushed in this area, but beat off the attack killing 37 V.C. Among the items of heavy equipment coming in is a road grader, which will be used to build an airstrip. A recovery vehicle is almost always required by mechanized units in the muddy fields of South Vietnam's lowlands. The advance elements have already done much toward clearing the campsite by the time the second convoy arrives. The armored cavalry is about to begin Operation Atlanta.
On 18 December 1966, General William C. Westmoreland visits the Newport area near Saigon to inspect the modern port facility now under construction. Every stage of the buildup of our armed forces here in Vietnam has required a proportionate buildup in the facilities to support these. This has involved the construction of entire harbors to get the goods of war into this country, logistical depots to store them, and airfields and roads to use them. But we're not only building to help the Vietnamese people to thwart aggression, but many of the harbors, airports, hospitals, roads, and support facilities we're building here will last many years beyond the present conflict. When peace is restored and Vietnam is free to pursue her own destiny, these facilities will be turned over to the Vietnamese. So in a very real sense, we are building for peace here in Vietnam. A new personnel detection device is being field tested by members of the 25th Infantry Division near Cushy. Water is used to activate the filtration system of the super sniffer. Then the controls are set for both audio and meter alarms. The audio signal headband is worn over the operator's temples. He receives the alarm signal from the power pack on his back. The sensor element is attached to the operator's rifle. Its findings are indicated on a meter and transmitted to the filtration device. Starting out on patrol, the operator scans the cover ahead. The new device, known as Man Pack, is sensitive to odors given off by the human body, cigarette smoke, or human waste up to 300 meters ahead of the operator. In this test, the electronic sniffer soon detects the presence of someone in the heavy underbrush. Taking a bearing, the patrol goes in. A smoking cigarette butt gives proof that the new detection equipment works. On 15 December, at the Camp Whiteside area of Fort Riley, Kansas, Vehicles and equipment of the 9th Infantry Division are loaded aboard triple-decker railroad cars to begin the long journey to Vietnam. Nicknamed the Old Reliables for their distinguished performance in World War II, the crack 9th Division will add an important plus to U.S. operations and raise total troop strength in Vietnam to another all-time high. A ramp is fixed in place, and the vehicles begin climbing to the top deck. 5,000 troops from the 9th have already moved out, and a few days after these films were taken, the first contingent arrived by transport in Vung Tau. The 15,000-man division, commanded by Major General George Eckhart, is expected to complete its move by mid-February. On 6 December at Usaror headquarters in Heidelberg, Lieutenant General James H. Polk, accompanied by General Andrew P. O'Meara, Usaror Commander-in-Chief, arrives to assume his new duties as Deputy Commander-in-Chief Usaror for 7th Army. General Polk is welcomed at a formal ceremony in his honor, including a 15-gun salute by members of the 529th MP Battalion. A former 5th Corps commander, General Polk has been Assistant Army Chief of Staff for Force Development in Washington. In his new assignment, General Polk will be responsible for the training, combat readiness, and support of all 7th Army units. Generals O'Meara and Polk troop the line, then return to the reviewing stand. Accompanied by the 529th Band, the troops pass in review.
a formal welcome to the new deputy commander-in-chief, usaror.